a real life plot twist. A federal judge overturns the conviction of Brendan Dassey, subject of the popular Netflix documentary series, Making a Murderer, ruling his confession was involuntary. Now, after nine years of incarceration, he may finally go free. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Dan Harris. I grabbed her arm, put it on the side, and tied her up. This is 16-year-old Brendan Dassey confessing to murder. Let me bring her outside and shot her. The teenager from Wisconsin describing how he and his uncle Stephen Avery raped and murdered 25-year-old photographer Teresa Hallbach. But today, a stunning reversal. After spending nearly a decade behind bars, a federal judge overturned Dassey's conviction, ruling that the teen's confession was involuntary because investigators pushed him into it. Dassey's trial was featured in Netflix's true crime documentary sensation, Making a Murderer. The case sparked outrage among many viewers and Dassey's defense team, who said from the beginning that he was manipulated into confessing to a brutal crime he did not commit. A lawyer who starred in Making a Murderer tweeting today, justice finally strikes. We're over the moon. Laura Nyrider, one of Dassey's lead attorneys and fiercest defenders. He's in shock. <laughs> he's grateful and he's just trying to process and understand what's happening. Come on, Brandon, be honest. You can do it. Just tell us the truth. The judge today acknowledged doubts as to the reliability of Dassey's confession, but said the ruling hinged on the issue of whether that confession was given voluntarily and based on Dassey's age, intellectual deficits, and the absence of support of adults, he determined it was not. Dassey has maintained his innocence, making this emotional plea in a letter he read as part of the Netflix documentary. I am innocent of the rape and murder of Teresa Halbach. Please help me if you can. Sincerely, Brendan Dassey. Earlier this year, I set out to explore the question, if Brendan Dassey did not commit the crime, why would he confess? And if this videotape really shows Dassey falsely confessing, what made the jury convict? First stop. We're going to Laura's office. Laura Nyrider. The interrogators aren't banging the table. They're not threatening him. Does it fit into the sort of classic model of coercive interrogations? Absolutely, it does. At the time of his arrest, Brendan Dassey was a high school sophomore in Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. He had a low IQ and was enrolled in several special ed classes. He lived on the family salvage yard right next to his uncle Stephen. Who had been released from prison after serving 18 years for a rape he didn't commit. I'm just glad you're home, honey. <laughs> but then Avery was arrested and charged with the murder of Teresa Halbach. I just have a seat, Brendan. Several months later, Brendan was brought in for questioning. Caught her. Caught her where? On a throw up. It appeared hard to be able to argue that it was coerced. Len Kaczynski was one of Dassey's original court-appointed attorneys. He says when he watched the confession tape, he became convinced there was no way a jury would believe Dassey was innocent. Kaczynski did try to get Dassey's confession thrown out. The defendant's motion to suppress these statements is denied. What are your thoughts after today? Well, we're disappointed in... Uh, uh, we're start over. So Kaczynski steered Dassey to cut a plea deal. He even set up another interview with his client and the police. You and Steve had this planned? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. An interview Kaczynski actually skipped because he says he had Army Reserve duty. How on earth could you opt out of that? With 20-20 hindsight, yeah, it was a mistake. For his failure to attend that meeting. Okay, I'll watch you sign now. The judge removed Kaczynski from Dassey's case. Do you have a clear conscience? Yes, I do. Well, I did what I thought was uh, in Dassey's best interest. I don't think, though, those mistakes had any impact at all on the verdict in Dassey's case. Several months later, Dassey went to trial with different attorneys, and his confession dominated the proceedings. Your job at the end of this case will decide whether that statement ought to be believed. When you watch the videos carefully, They'll be exposed for what they are. And I think they're just garbage. Dassey himself took the stand. You made it up. Yeah. Sticking to his story, even under tough cross-examination. And you lied to the police. Yes. Are you lying? You're lying today? No. The prosecutor at Dassey's trial made this confident assertion. People who are innocent don't confess. 
The defendant confessed because he was guilty, because he did it. But the fact is, innocent people do confess. Richard Offshe is one of the leading defense experts on interrogation tactics. He worked on the infamous case of the Central Park Five. I grabbed one arm. So I can grab one arm and grab their legs and stuff. Five teenagers who confessed in gruesome detail to attacking and raping a 28-year-old woman in the spring of 1989. Every time she was 12 years smacking, he said, shut up. He kept smacking. But these confessions were all false. They came to believe that they would only be able to minimize their punishment if they cooperated with the police. Turns out one out of four people wrongfully convicted and later exonerated by DNA evidence have made a false confession or incriminating statement. So when you look at Brendan Dassey's confession, what do you see? I see something that almost makes one ashamed to be an American. It's that bad. They get him to say anything that they want him to say. I don't feel that if I was faced by cops accusing me of a crime I did not commit, that I would confess to it. What would you do? I would say, get me a lawyer. And that's the difference. Those are the people I never see. The ones I see tend to think, I gotta get myself out of this. And probably your income is a bit higher than the average person. Laura Nyrider broke down the video point by point to demonstrate how she says the interrogators railroaded Dassey. We just need to hear the whole story from you. They reduce him over time to a place where he doesn't think that he can convince these officers of his innocence. And when he's at that position of hopelessness, then the officers offer him a way out. Your mom said you'd be honest with us. And she's behind you 100% no matter what happens yeah, here. That's what she said because she thinks you know more, too. We're in your corner. And what you see is Brendan begin to believe the officers and think, OK, I have to say these things that they want me to say. Even when Dassey breaks down and confesses, Nyrider says, by her analysis, he offers up no information that was not already widely reported in the media. The 25-year-old photographer disappeared last Halloween. He was last seen taking pictures at the Avery Salvage Yard. Or directly fed to him by investigators. All right, I'm just going to come out and ask you who shot her in the head. He did. Why didn't you tell us that? Because I couldn't think of it. We reached out to the detectives in this video for comment, but our efforts were not successful. Prosecutors in Dassey's case now have 90 days to decide whether to appeal today's decision or retry him. If they do neither, he could be a free man once again. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York.